Why does everything have to be so complicated? Oh, I'm exaggerating. This is pretty easy stuff right here, but it's still good to know, good to see side by side by side, the different options that you have for cutting edges, you know, for snow plows, for snow pushers, even for snow blowers. Maybe even for your bucket, if you want to bolt one on too. You have different options here, okay? So let's take a look at the benefits of each one of these, the drawbacks. We'll compare some different facets of it and kind of get into it, give you a little look at these and make your own decision. And as always, if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. Check out the other videos on my channel and read through that description below. You'll get more information on products like this right here and other really cool things for your tractor. So in case you didn't know, let's point this out. You have a steel edge here. You have a UHMW poly edge right here. And then you have a rubber edge right here. Now for the sake of comparison, I pulled an edge that I would use on a snow pusher. That way we can kind of compare apples to apples to apples. No oranges here. So HLA snow pushers, for example, and again, you can pick any manufacturer out there. You can just pick edges if you want to, but we're going to use HLA just for an example because it's a popular item that I sell. Those snow pushers are awesome. Check them out. HLA is going to offer both the rubber edge and the steel edge. They don't actually offer the UHMW, that poly edge in between there, but the rubber edge is going to be the most expensive option and the steel edge is going to be the least expensive. Not to muddy the waters, but when you get a pusher from HLA, you get your choice of steel or rubber on the main edge. There's no cost difference there. So the cost comes into play if you want to add an edge onto the back drag. To visualize it a little bit easier, let's take a look at this snow pusher right here. Now this is rotated on its back. It's going to be shipping out. We can ship these things all over the country, pallet forks, all sorts of stuff with them too. But the main pusher right here, down in the bottom, you get your choice steel or rubber. There's no cost difference, but up here, this black hunk of steel is a back drag. Now you don't have to get an additional cutting edge on there. You can just run it with the raw steel that's up there. But if you want to add on a rubber edge or a steel edge up here, it's going to be an additional cost. And so up here, the rubber is going to be more expensive. The steel is nearly half the price. The third option that I went out and sourced myself to give folks an option, not just for the HLA and not just for the Tar River snow plows, but if they have their own snow plow and just need a replaceable edge or want something different, I went out and sourced what you can see maybe stacked behind me there, those UHMW edges, both in different thicknesses and widths. So to help with that comparison, the UHMW is literally right in the middle. Okay, both not just physically here, but in price as well. So most expensive, right in the middle and least expensive. So an important reason why you may be looking for a new cutting edge is maybe not even because it wore out, but because you want to protect that new driveway that you have, or maybe the new house you moved into that you used to have a stone drive and now you've got a paved drive or concrete or cobblestone or pavers or whatever it is, just something nice that you don't want to mess up. So let's talk about protection of those more delicate surfaces. So your rubber is going to be the most protective that you can get. It's the softest material so that naturally it makes sense. Again, the UHMW is going to be right there in the middle, not far behind the rubber, believe it or not, with the steel, of course, kind of pulling up the caboose. It's not going to be very protective at all. It's not designed to be. So you can be perfectly confident using either the rubber or the UHMW, the poly, on those paved surfaces, the delicate, the high-end surfaces, if you're in commercial uh, plowing and you're looking to do this for high-end residential or commercial customers, either one of these, the UHMW or the rubber is gonna be a good solution for you. I would probably avoid the steel in that kind of application. And so keep in mind, as far as protection goes, your snow pusher, your snow plow, your snow blower, all these tools that are for snow removal have built in ways to help protect you already. So snow pushers, for example, here are going to have skid runners that are going to prevent the pusher itself from digging into the ground. It's just going to kind of glide along the top of the surface. You start to get into some of the bigger pushers as well, and you're going to have a trip edge. Okay, so if you do hit a curb or a driveway transition, that kind of um, spot there where you could potentially do a lot of damage, it's going to give and, and, and flex and go over that while you drive forward. If you can see through the metal crating here, you're going to see these shiny uh, silver springs here. Now, these are also going to be trip edges, right? So on these snow plows, these are big, beefy snow plows, by the way. But if they hit an edge, they're going to give. It's going to rock forward and then it's going to snap back after it gets over that hump or that blockage, whatever it is that's in the way. But that is what's going to prevent it from digging it up and, and digging into it and causing permanent damage. And so it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually these big discs down here. These are skid shoes. Uh, the snow plows have them as well. So you're going to have a lot of different ways along with these runners that are over here to prevent from digging in. But you still have that long cutting edge there no matter what it is. You have to think about that because that is where a lot of the damage does occur. So which edge here do you think is going to scrape through and cut through that hard packed snow, ice, that kind of material there that's really packed down, been driven over? What one's going to do that the best? 
Well, it makes sense to think that if something's gonna be very protective of a driveway, it's probably not gonna do so well at cutting through that hard pack. And so it does go without saying that the steel is gonna be the absolute best at doing that, but really, right behind that, right on its heels, is gonna be the UHMW. It is very good at cutting through packed snow, getting through that ice, just chiseling right through it, and allowing you to keep on going. The rubber is gonna be quite a ways back on that list there, it's just not going to do well. So if you have driven over your snow a few times and you're thinking you're gonna plow now, well, guess what? You're gonna be able to get all the other snow out of there, but you're gonna see those tracks in your drive that you've gone over two or three times, you know, in and out, up and down, all throughout the day, whatever it is, with the rubber edge here because it's just not designed to cut through that. It's a soft material. It's still gonna last a very long time. You're not gonna wear through it super quickly, but it's just not gonna cut like the UHMW and the steel. So last year I put a UHMW edge onto my snowplow on my John Deere X739 that I had. It worked amazingly well. No, it did not cut quite as well as steel, but it was so much better than the rubber it was just amazing stuff. And so I just fell in love with it. And so that's why I searched and searched and finally found a source where I could provide this solution for customers as well. Because I think it's a really good hybrid, not of rubber and steel, but the properties of each to both protect surfaces, but also cut well and last a really long time. And so let's talk about longevity really quick. So clearly rubber is going to wear the fastest. It's the softest material, so you're not gonna get as long of a life. So you're trading safety, you know, um, protection for your plowing surfaces for a little bit shorter life. Now, all of these edges have that usable life. They're made to be replaceable. The good thing is these can all be flipped over so you can get use out of both sides. You know, you can use this side up and then you can flip it over and use this side as well. So you get double the life out of it, which is a really good thing. But rubber is going to be the shortest lifespan overall. Steel is going to be in the middle and actually the UHMW is gonna have the longest lifespan. It's been proven that it is more wear resistant than steel. So that is pretty darn incredible. So over the long run, you could potentially get the most bang for your buck, maybe out of the UHMW. Now let's talk about noise, right? So you do have a machine, right? You're gonna have a truck or a tractor or a skid steer, something making noise, all right? But it really pales in comparison to a snowplow just scraping along as it's doing work. I mean, I can remember waking up in the middle of the night growing up and just hearing the snow plows coming through and just scraping along. Those were all those steel edges on there. So they are the noisiest for sure. It's not a consideration for everybody, but when you're plowing in the middle of the night or the really early morning, a lot of folks are used to, accustomed to hearing an engine noise. But that steel scraping can be very disruptive to your neighbors, to your family, to the apartment complex if you're doing commercial lots, whatever it might be. So a consideration to think about is noise level. And of course, rubber is going to be the quietest on the other end of the spectrum from steel with that UHMW right on the heels of rubber. Again, I had personal experience with this last winter by running it on my snowplow back at home. It's perfectly quiet. It's as quiet as rubber, which is virtually silent for all intents and purposes. A total game changer, a total night and day difference from a steel edge. So again, manufacturers aren't really giving this kind of option right here, at least in the tractor world, you know, on your snow plows, your snow blowers, your snow pushers, with a few exceptions here and there. But this is an option that I can, I can sell you, okay? We can cut these to length, just a little leftover uh, block right here so you can kind of see. Now this is gonna be one and a quarter inches thick, um, six inches high, let's see, this way here, and then we can cut them to length. They're gonna be cut in blanks like this. Just cut it with a saw uh, right to your length. And then you know what, you can drill this out, just get some hardware, nuts, bolts, washers, that kind of thing. If you wanna get a flat retainer bar, you could. You can countersink it, you can just put some washers on here. There's a lot of ways to attach it, all right? But this stuff is very easy to work with, just with regular tools that you're already gonna have in your garage. So for comparison's sake here, this is gonna be a three quarter inch thick piece. This is gonna be one and a quarter inch thick. I went a little bit bigger and beefier than what you're gonna see on a lot of the edges that are out there. I just feel like, why not go a little overkill? I do like to provide value, so I really, increase it a little bit more than what you're gonna see comparing to some of the other common edges that you'll see out there. I'd rather be a little bit more heavy duty than not enough. But UHMW doesn't get brittle in freezing cold temperatures. It's going to wear very well, a very low uh, friction coefficient. So that means it's just going to glide along. It's self lubricating. Again, it's gonna last longer than steel. This stuff is crazy. It's kind of like how I tell folks about the, the plastic hoods on the John Deere's. You know, they've come a long way from 20, 25 years ago when they were first introduced. Plastics, polymers, polys, all this kind of stuff. It is advancing like crazy. And this is just one of the really cool materials that's out there. So I know it's just one more decision you gotta make when you wanna buy a piece of snow removal equipment. 
but maybe if you already have a piece of snow removal equipment and you're just looking for a new edge, it just gives you a nice side-by-side-by-side -by -side -by -side comparison to see what they're all about. Yeah, there's gonna be some price differences here. We covered a lot of stuff here to go into that right decision for the edge that'll protect your surface. So if you don't wanna make contact with the surface, just adjust those skid shoes, adjust the skid runners, that way your plow edge is riding above the ground and not making contact with it. But if you intend on making contact with your plowing surface, then you need to know the right selection for you. So if you want to add on a UHMW edge like this to your order, you know, we can ship this stuff out with your pusher, with your plow, with your snow blower. If you get another attachment, we can ship it out with that as well, but we can also just wrap these. We just bubble wrap them really quick and then put shrink wrap or stretch wrap right around that and just ship them out UPS ground. It's actually pretty cheap to ship them that way, believe it or not. And uh, we haven't had any complaints yet with them showing up. These things are really rigid, rugged piece of material right here. So you shouldn't expect there to be any problems. Really quick, I do want to thank one of my sponsors, one of my partners, Lube Shuttle. They, uh, they sent me this grease gun, this electric grease gun. Now, I normally pay for everything that you see on this channel and on my website, but they were uh, very gracious and very kind in sending this to me. So um, this is just another amazing product. I, I kind of talked to them about, you know, is this a good seller for them? Is it robust? Does it kind of hold up to snuff like the regular Lube Shuttle system does? I just, you know, having a tractor dealership and greasing constantly. And so I just, it wears you out just pumping, you know, pumping that handle, the pistol grip handle all the time. And so I've had this now for about a week. It is stinking amazing. You get a kit uh, with a case with a couple batteries. I'll have more information coming on it, but Lube Shuttle, you get 5% off with code GWT. There's a link below to their website where you can get, you know, whatever products you want, whether you want the electric system or the, the, the regular style grease gun, but it's a innovative greasing system. I'll post a link above too, if I uh, think about it to their um, whole greasing system here and what makes it so innovative. But if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you check out the other videos on my channel and make sure you read through that description below. Well, until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.